On the 16th of May 1987, tens of thousands of St Murn fans, a sea of black and white, descended in Hamden Park, the home of Scottish football. They were there to see their team take on Dundee United in the final of the Scottish Cup. It had been 28 years since the Saints had last lifted the trophy and the fans, in hope and expectation, were dreaming of an end to that long wait for Cup glory. I'm Chris Gogallon, lifelong fan and co-commentator for St Murn TV. Join me as we look back on that momentous day in the club's history in the company of a man to whom the phrase club legend is truly applicable. Appointed team captain at the age of 17 by Sir Alex Ferguson, club captain on the day of the final, twice club manager and current CEO. Of course, it can only be Tony Fitzpatrick. If I can just kind of wind back, because I think for fans and probably for yourself, yeah. one of the things, of course, run up to the final was mm. you've been quite seriously injured. Do you want to just tell us what happened? Yeah, it was, as I say, if you look back at that year, it was a disaster for me personally uh, up to the final because I'd got a bad injury. I broke my jaw in two places, plus my knee at the time, the way I fell after getting my knee, I dislocated my knee. So it was uh, quite major. If you look mm -hmm. at that season, I hardly played at all. Uh, and I never played in any of the cup ties whatsoever. So, and I'd been captain for 10 years before that. Sure. And uh, when, I, when we went in the cup run, and Alex Smith, I've got to give him great credit, kept me a big part of it. Uh, I was at every game and I was in the dress room at every game and hopefully playing a part off the park type of mm -hmm. thing, speaking to players and, and so I was club captain so yeah. I'm still trying to do that side but if I'm being honest as well inwardly when we beat uh, Hearts in the semi-final and I thought oh my I've been here all this time, it's my big chance captain, going. I've never yeah. and it's gone because yeah. I was, I was honestly there was no chance and then uh, a couple of weeks before the final I'd been st I started to train yeah. and we had Rangers to play at Ibrox and Alec in his wisdom somehow he, he, he sort of seen me in training and stuff and said look Tony I know you, you know we want to play in the match but I think you could maybe come on for a spell and uh, if, if needed if we need mm -hmm. you to slow the game down or whatever <laughs> he wanted um, and I was he says well we're going to give you a bit of the game against Rangers which was two weeks before the final yeah. and uh, I managed to get through a good part of that game and uh, he spoke to me after and said, look, we'll get you involved. And so I was, I was, it was for despair to real joy. Yeah, well, I can imagine that. I, just out of interest, I always wonder for other players who were part of that squad, I'm thinking yeah. of like Sir Peter Godfrey oh. or you know, Paul Chams or somebody. Did, does a team have a conversation about that? Or is it just accepted, listen, it's a squad game and if we don't make it... Well, it's funny, it's a bit of both because, as you say, uh, there was Gary Peebles as well who had mm -hmm. played two, the first two games of the cup run. Paul Chalmers and Peter Godfrey had both scored important right. goals. Yeah. And when it came to that, there was somebody like myself who never had played in any of the games. And that, and I'm not just saying this, uh, I know I'm jumping forward here, but when we were sitting in the restroom afterwards, I looked across and I looked at my medal and I looked at the two guys and Peter... Uh, although they were happy, but football's a selfish game as well. Sure. You know, I even felt a bit in myself when I walked out saying, I should have been captain here for the day, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> and you do, that, yeah. Your, yeah. Right, yeah. your ego, your selfish as a player, you want to do these things. Um, but I really felt for them that day. I mm -hmm. did, that was uh, as I sat in the dressing room, I looked at the two guys and I thought, God, what they've done, and they're, they're, I'm so lucky to have this. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, so, but it's part of football, I'm afraid. Yeah. That's just the, the way it is, no? Mm -hmm. I understand that you say. So, I mean, I'm just thinking like the build up to the cup for me. Yeah. So, I, you know, as a fan the night before, I'm home, and there's all these thoughts going through your head, and yeah. you're picturing the team winning, and you're picturing yes. all sorts yes. of things. And yeah. You almost, I don't mean feeling physically sick, but my stomach would turn up so often. So that's as a fan. Yeah. What was it like for the players the night before? Were you at a hotel? Or? Yes, we were. What, what happened was we spent 
from Tuesday, uh, no, sorry, from Monday to the Thursday, we were in Seamill. Mm -hmm. We were down there. And then Alec, to be fair, he, he gathered the players in and says, would you rather sleep in your own beds or would you rather go to a hotel the night before? So you had that option. All oh, right. So, we, and we would have the team meeting at the pre-match at 12 o'clock. He would give the team out and stuff like that. But he'd already sp spoken to different players, of mm -hmm. course. But yep. that was going to be the team talk, the last team talk and give the team out. And uh, generally, I can speak personally just for that feeling that day. I knew I was going to be part of the team in terms of uh, on the bench and coming off. So I was, but I just went through my usual routine, what I did as a player every week, and I'm a great visualiser of things. Mm -hmm. So the night before the game, I slept perfectly. Uh, before I went to sleep, I always closed my eyes and always dream about winning the cup, uh, picking the cup up and showing mm -hmm. it to the St Mirren fans. And, that went through. I actually visualised myself scoring a goal <laughs> as well, coming on and scoring the winning goal. Uh, that never happened, but uh, I was on for the winning goal, so yeah. it was great. Um, so I just went through normal routine. And the boys, to be fair, you just there's a, a strange thing that year because no disrespect to our team, no. If you look at the league performances, we were very, they weren't great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've. Personally, I've played in a lot better St Mern teams, right, yeah. uh, and that's just been honest. But there just seemed to be it was our year, and you got that feeling. And you even watching the games, no doing it more, and the game changed. Every game seemed to go their way. Yeah. And uh, the final, the night before, all the boys actually most of went to the hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a, a good laugh that Friday night. You know, some played cards, some. I mean, just watch the telly, I was all sat about, made a cup of tea together and just, uh, I, it, was, it was a great, great, great thing. Then you wake up the next morning, you go down if you wanted breakfast and uh, then we all gathered for the team meeting. Mm. I mean, it's funny you're talking about the team that season, you're right, because I was going to a lot of games yeah, at Love Street and yeah. it, it wasn't a fantastic season in terms no. of league, as you say, no. but it's when I was kind of just thinking about the final again, there was a lot of really young players in the team at the time. You know, I think of obviously Ian Cabot, Paul Lambert, Paul 17, Lambert, you know. Yeah. Tommy Wilson still been reasonably young, you know. David, uh, David Winnie, Winnie uh, Brian uh, yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, Brian, I mean. No, Ian Ferguson yeah, was course, a young man. Yeah. So as a kind of a, a more experienced member of the <laughs> Thank sport, you for shall saying we say, that, yeah. yeah. Um, did you have any, you know, maybe like it's yourself and Frank and you know, kind of older players, did you ever think, they're too young, they won't cope with this? Or do no. they have that kind of naivety of youth where yeah. they just thought we'd get on and play? Usually you find more experienced players become very nervous, mm -hmm. uh, where the younger players, there's no fear. Yep. And I think that's vital. But they were good players, although they were young. Mm -hmm. Lamp, no, Paul Lambert was yeah. a, a top player. Brian Hamilton in midfield was mm -hmm. full of energy, could play as well. Uh, David Winnie, Ian Ferguson was different yeah. class. Um, so. Although they were young, they were top players, mm -hmm. uh, and there was no fear of them. Yeah. And of course, one of the strange things for that cup final team was Ian Cameron had sat his final uni exams on the Saturday morning, yeah. and he came to play in the afternoon. Incredible. That's what I, and uh, he passed his exam yeah, as well. Oh, even, yeah. uh, so there's a double celebration. Uh -huh, yeah. But you're right, on the morning, Cammy uh, never turned up to the team meeting. At, uh, so he'd, he'd sat at his test in the morning. How incredible is that? No? Did the team know that was happening? Yes. Yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah. It was, uh, everything was always uh, at the team meetings before. Ian um, made it known mm -hmm. plenty, of, plenty of time what he would be doing that in the morning. Yeah. And uh, I'll credit again to the management team allowing that and yeah, yeah. stuff. Because it's... That's no. stuff of fairy tales in football, it is. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. can you imagine uh -huh. that? I know somebody I sitting know. a major exam in the, in the morning of a cup final, in and he came on and done great. Uh -huh. No, he yeah. was a big part of the, the success. So It was, I mean, I'm thinking, so in the way there, you like, beat Caledonia, Thistles, yeah. it was at the time, Morton, 3-2 yeah. away, yeah. Wraith, 2 away, yeah. Hearts, the 2-1 game at Hamden, where Hearts pulled it back. Yeah, it was and, you know, for a uh, minute, you're thinking, how's this going to go? And then McGarvey gets a great goal. Mr. Jean just sitting yeah. in McGarvey, you know, <laughs> Frank had come back to the club and stuff and he's a top, top player and I, I thought through the whole cup, taking the final, 
I thought the semi-final was the best game. I thought Zimmerman played very well that day yeah, against probably, the, that, probably yeah. the favourites, Hearts, because mm-hmm. uh, they were a good side at that time. But we outplayed them, yeah. uh, and I, I know they get back there, but I always felt we had it in us to beat them that day. Yeah, I mean, you were watching it. It didn't feel like the heads had really gone no. down. It was more like we set back. But Let's go and win this. Uh-huh, yeah. And McGarv always comes up in big, big games. Yeah, uh-huh, Frank yeah. McGarv was always scoring goals. Yeah, great. So, spoke about the night before. So, in the yeah. day, the build up, say, so me, I'm a fan. Take my wife, first ever St. Mun game yeah. she went to. Left with the impression we would always win, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, took my son, who was eight at the time, and his best friend. The same my son had been bringing to Love Street. Yeah. But at the time, it was the usual thing. He would normally, I'd be kind of on the old. Yeah. West stand, stand up, he'd go down the yeah. front with all the kids and watch it. Yeah. Different going to Hamden, because yeah. we drive up park close to the stadium, we're walking up and of course it's a sea of black and white and That's tangerine and black. And I remember when we got in and we were in the, the stand facing the tunnel yeah. with the other St Mun fans and we sat him and his pal up on the Brilliant. barrier so they could actually Brilliant. see. But I remember looking at one point it was kind of like why is there all these people here, you know? For I him know. it was a real, just that kind of, um, almost shock of yeah. so many, and the noise, and just the, the kind of, the sense of atmosphere. Yeah. So for the players before the game, what's the procedure? The exact same as your, you and your children, <laughs> it was incredible. Before the game, as I said, we met for a, a, a breakfast, but it was just toast or whatever. Then the pre-match, the build to that, the, the manager had the meeting, and. Uh, he sat and we, we went through it. We'd done all our work that week on tactically what we were going to do and things. But it, it just, Alec Kidd spoke about this was a journey now and you no, know, it was it was the final part of the journey and you no, know, go out and enjoy it and, and win this, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, uh, and he always said, to be fair, I know it's used a lot, he says, but if you do want it, everyone you sit in this room will be a legend. And, yeah. Be remember forever more. So it was that was quite a stirring speech, and Jimmy Bowen the same, and mm-hmm. it, it, it was it was good. Mm. But we had the pre-match, and then of course the teams knowing then there's disappointment as well. But I've got to give again the Peter Godfrey's, the Chalmers, all these guys uh, great credit because they never showed it going up in the bus mm-hmm. and stuff. And as you say, as you travel through, because we went through Barhead and different ways to get Hamden. And it was just all the way there as well. This we went earlier, of course, but it was still black and white yeah. everywhere. And as you arrived at the stadium, uh, it was incredible because we just seemed to outnumber Dundee United mm-hmm. fans, and it was just a sea of black and white. And just like yourself, my family and you know, my wife and uh, my son uh, Paul had just no long been born as well, but he was at the game, mm-hmm. and uh, along with my daughter Lorraine. So I had family members there. My uh, my dad was there. My mum was there. So it was yeah. it was great. It was mm-hmm. just a uh, it was a fantastic. As you see, I'm, I'm re- reliving it in my mind and hours. I'd be driving there, and it was just and you get that inspires you. Yeah. If it doesn't, you shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. No, there's nerves always before any game. But just when you look about and you just think, if you need that extra motivation and what it meant to everybody mm-hmm. and uh, that was said in the dressing room as well, you no know, players for sales going around each other and you know, there was one thing is uh, if we didn't, and we didn't play too well, but what we did say as a bond was we'll give everything, yep. you no know, we'll give everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, Alex Smith is a manager, yeah, because yeah, you'd obviously, you'd worked under Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah, Jim yeah. Clooney, do you work under him? I went, worked under him all, Jim, uh, Ricky, Ricky McFarlane, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, worked under him all, yeah. How, in what way was he different? In what way did he kind of? Yeah, it did was especially a motivating you. Or? Um, no, Alec, yeah, Alec was. Uh, as I say, I'm not being disrespectful, Alec, but there's only one manager you can t- start Alec oh, Ferguson. Yeah, I mean, Alec came in uh, and made Jimmy Bowen his assistant, which mm-hmm. Jimmy used to play here and sure. knew the players anyway and stuff. Uh, Alec was a very quiet guy. That good uh, man manager mm-hmm. um, kept things bubbling over. He was very shrewd tactically. Um, no, it, it was great. I always remember the first one against Inverness. This over in the Glen Hill Hotel, and uh, there was just starting off in the cup, and he said uh, we're playing Inverness. This so um, today, and he says we can win the cup. 
this is their cup final, he says, but yeah. if we're being realistic, we've got five games to play in a cup and this team in here is capable of going and winning the cup. Mm -hmm. Them winning the cup is beating you today. Yeah. And I was sitting, the, the, I wasn't involved in the game, but I was in the team meeting and stuff and I thought, I, I know it, you know what I mean? Because we are capable of winning it. Sure. And that belief started then. Really? Is yeah. it early? Far because back it, as yeah. yeah, and it, it's, it, we struggled that game as well, <laughs> but we ended up winning it. Yeah. And I think, uh, as it went on, I think Alec was very, uh, used that very cleverly and sort of built the players to believe that it was their year. Mm -hmm. But so he's a top man. Uh -huh. yeah. But he didn't go shouting and ranting about it, it was more kind of subtle? No, he was very subtle. Alex is a quiet spoken mm -hmm. guy, uh, he can lose his temper like any manager, but generally under Alec it was uh, very calm and uh, he would speak very calmly. Mm -hmm. So, you already knew you were going to be in the bench? Yes. Right, uh -huh, yeah. uh, you were in the number 14 shirt that yeah, day? That's right, right, yeah, that's right. So, if we just even move to the game itself, I think, as you say, you know, if we're being honest, probably the, the performance against Hearts in the semi was, the best, was it yeah. was a better performance because yeah. I remember as a fan looking and thinking, I know we've got players capable of yeah. really turning, but yeah. for some reason either passes weren't well, connecting. We're players just no. did, first touches were letting people down, and I think in both sides it, it seemed was, pretty nervy because uh, they'd lost the final four days before or whatever yeah. a major final. And they came, in. but you're right, that day was scrappy and it was a poor, and I remember sitting in, Alec, even after, I always remember him turning to me and saying, Tony, go and get warmed up after half an hour. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's saying, <laughs> listen, uh, and then, I think it was five minutes before the end of the game, mm -hmm. he sort of got his aside and said, look, uh, go on and try and calm it and get on the ball and make yeah. passes and stuff like that. And just, I, I look, mean, as you're sitting there watching it, you know, yeah. From, from the dugout, is part of your mind, are you kind of almost like conflict, is it, I just watched the score and went, or is it, but I need to get on? Well, I've I went on, <laughs> myself, yeah. I wanted on, uh -huh. but I w wanted to win, of course, yeah. but when I came on, it, it was good bringing me on at that time, because it, it gave me a couple of touches of the ball, and then we were right sure. uh, after that, we went into extra time. Mm. So Paul Lambert you replaced, was it? Was it? Paul, yeah, uh -huh. Paul yep, came uh -huh. off, yeah, yeah. Um, and I came on, so... No, it was, uh, and it was great. And it was just mm -hmm. when you were on the park, and you knew, because you got a feel when you're on a park with players, and I could feel they'd got a goal disallowed, if you remember. Well, I'm just going to ask oh, you sorry, that. Yeah, no, that's yeah. all right, no, because, I mean, once again, you as a fan, I remember that ball going in, and it just the feeling oh, in your stomach, stomach dropped was just, as well. yeah, uh, yeah every, that. and you know, and it, it wasn't, I was still kind of in my, my personal grief, yeah. I heard someone saying, yeah. he's offside, he's offside, <laughs> and you know, haven't watched it back now, so I think the argument was that Ken Gallagher was actually, because the cross came in, did, yeah. Big Campbell palms it out, and I remember, because Terry Butcher, having watched it back, was one of the co comedy ah, he says right. a great save, pity it just went out to yeah, Ferguson. That's he rattles it in. By this stage, Gallagher's behind Campbell in right. the goal line. There was a Simone player with him, I'm not sure who no, it was. It was Tommy Wilson. Oh, was it? it was Tommy right Wilson. So, now, it's interesting because on the TV, Arch McPherson said he thought the offside was legitimate. Terry Butcher said he thought it should have been a goal. No. At the time, did you feel, did you think... Oh, I, thought, I thought they'd scored, uh -huh. but when you look back on it now, it, it's this offside rule, but they mm -hmm. keep changing all the time. Yeah. It was generally offside. Uh-huh. Although, to be fair, he wasn't interfered, he wouldn't have no, been uh -huh. gutted if that was St Mum. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. But see, for that, on the park, I looked about and I, I felt their players just, phew, they thought, oh, that's us again. You, mm -hmm. you get that feel and then we started to control the game, to be yeah. honest. Uh -huh. No, we went on and uh, and the visualisation I had just before <laughs> Fergie scored, I don't know if you look back, I've had a shot. Oh, and, right. uh, <laughs> I know, know many people look at that. But me and Ian Cameron mm -hmm. uh, nearly scored yeah. before Fergie because you know, I was a goal scorer, but I always remember it was a good distance out, but I've hit a shot and one of the moments I thought, that's getting in. Yeah. And it just went over the bar. Mm -hmm. And then Cammy had a good chance. And uh, then Fergie went through and yeah. scored. I mean, so even like the Fergie goal, once again, so when you're on the pitch, yeah. can, you, can you see what's... Because I can see no, I, the benefit no, of... No, definitely. I'm in that uh, fair game. What we had was David Winnie had knocked it to Brian Hamilton. I'm besides... I'm on this side of Brian Hamilton and Brian's took it and then just played it on. Mm -hmm. And when Fergie gets off, 
I'm trying to, I'm in the opposite side, but I'm trying to get in the box. Hopefully, he's <laughs> going to cut it across. But uh -huh. you know, Fergie in the days, once well, you get that head down and it, you could see him steaming towards the goals. Uh, and it, I'm a good, see a good distance, but I'm in line with him by this mm -hmm. time. He's running, I'm running without the ball, so I've yep. caught it. And I'm thinking, God, if this comes out or whatever, you're. But he's what well, great strike. I mean, just left foot oh, straight left to foot, the top right left corner. Oh, tremendous yeah. strike. Uh, um, and then when you see that going in, it's just bedlam. Oh, no, uh, you just. Uh, it's, it's, I remember the fan. It's just that absolute. The whole place just erupted. No, uh, they just didn't. It was just a sea of black and white, and it was just the players then, and it's a great feeling uh, when that goal went in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we still good bit to go in the game. Yeah. But you always feel because you look, you know, you know when you're on the park. And players, said their their players had went, their players had went. They were they weren't coming back, mm -hmm. and that was. Although you still want to win that, so I kept. I think there's a story. Kenny Hope, the referee, um, I kept following him about five minutes. <laughs> no, I did honestly, oh, yeah. and I was pleading with him. It was, he, he was like, "This Patrick, get away, get away!" And I'm saying, Kenny. This is the first major trophy we've won. Come on, blow that yeah. whistle. And he's saying, there's only to get away. And I, I kept following him about. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was great when the final whistle went. That was real. I mean, just on yeah. that again, once again, just try to yes, get a sense I of know, a player's yeah. perspective. So, as you said, Dundee United, you know, yeah. had kind of, you know, they'd lost the UEFA Cup that, as well. Yeah. And one of the abiding memories to me was um, a kind of image of Billy Thompson yeah. just on his knees Slumped. with his head in his hand. And so, and I, when you look at it again, obviously you go over and you commit it. Yeah. Do, do you kind of say, God, that could have been us? Or is it just kind of like, well, it's a courtesy, but really, yeah. we've, we've won. I, I think it's afterwards you think that, you mm -hmm. know, you think, God, that could have been that goal that went in. And you start, yeah. and then you think, normally you going to think these things, but I've won the cup. Uh -huh. uh, but I did, you're right, when you could see physically in the part that players had went mm -hmm. and uh, you know as a player as well because they're giving you extra room because that Tired, they've yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. And I hate to use that word, giving up, but, it's, but they had their sort of minds had said, oh, well, this is another one we've lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and as I say, just the final whistle was an incredible experience. Yeah. I mean, once again, things that you know I remember as fans, just the bed home, <laughs> trying to hold on, my fans immediately fell off, the, 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 the bar he was sitting on, um, and just that, the sheer elation, it's, you know, it's, it's that realisation. It's relief you know, as well, no, because well, yeah, it right. is relief uh, in yeah, it, there yeah. is, and, uh, and... you do, and just for a wee second, you go over the goal that was disallowed, and think, I know. it could be so I different know. here for us. And uh, I always remember just looking and trying to find my family as well when the final whistle, you know, players are hugging each other, of course, and you're mm -hmm. looking at all the supporters, and you're lost for that minute, you're, you're away in another world. And I always remember trying to look for my wife and kids in this mass, <laughs> uh, I think my dad and stuff. And yeah. uh, no, it was just, uh, it was incredible. And even standing, waiting to go up for the cup and stuff. And I keep saying this, and Polly says, I, I think I did say something to Tony, he says, I can't remember. <laughs> but he did, to be fair to him, Billy Abercrombie, and I, I think this is the humility of the man. I wouldn't have done it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being honest, but he, he said, um, as we're starting, he went, you got him to get the cup. And I'm like, don't be no. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, Tony, you've been captain. And I went, no, listen, this is your, your day. Yeah. Although I was tempted to say <laughs> <laughs> But it was, no, I would, do you know what, I'm, I'm making that comment because that shows you the mark of the man. Oh, no, great and it to was do. fantastic, think, yeah. and he deserved to be captain that day. I but mean, I, one of the to me kind of two abiding memories in terms of images there's the the photo where it's the whole team yeah. and Alex and Jimmy and yeah, the kit man I think yeah. like Ian Ferguson and Frank McGarvey had like homemade hat, top hats, hats, hats on right. and you at the back right hand side yeah, with Paul. a great shot yeah. and then there's one of you and Billy going round holding know? the cup and it's just a fantastic it's just to me it just sums up the day because you can see in both your faces well, just what it means. And you know, that was a special moment in life for me. And I still feel it, and I'm getting emotional <laughs> with that. I can feel it back in my. And that was with me and Billy because we went to school together. Oh, we really went to the same that. school. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, me and Billy went to school. <laughs> now I remember the two years uh, standing and we said, right, let's take it to the fans. And the two years, I took a, a, an arm each and uh, we just ran. Mm -hmm. And it was just incredible to see this wall of black and white, and it was just, uh, oh, listen, it was, it's one of the moments, as you say, I've had great moments with my 
my children been born and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but that was up there with it, oh, <laughs> if I'm being honest, yeah. that was just, that's what was there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking, so I mean, as a club player, you'd what, over 350 league yeah, appearances yeah. until Hugh Murray broke your record. Yeah, over four thanks things. for remembering me, Shane, I signed Shuggy yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> but also what, over 450 appearances in total yeah. for the club. Was that the highlight? Is that yeah, I, I think so. But you know, it is the highlight, but I always go back to, and I'm not just saying this, probably for myself personally, yeah, the Scottish Cup, but when Fergie uh, was here and they made this cap, I always remember uh, getting the, the first armband mm -hmm. to go out and captain the, the team. Yep. And I always remember that feeling. So that was like the sure. Scottish Cup. Mm -hmm. I was just running out. A young boy, really, no captain in St Mum. It was just yeah. a dream. It was a dream. It's funny because I recently heard you tell the story that how yeah. you were kind of you were called up first to see Fergie, yeah. and you were ready to go and say, "I'm leaving." Because you promised your life would yeah, give up football. I promised right? I was to Elizabeth I was giving up football. Uh -huh, yeah, because yeah. yeah, nothing was happening for me, and I was. Uh, I did, Lorraine was born at the time. Mm -hmm. I was a young lad, and yeah. uh, and Fergie changed my whole life. Mm -hmm. And was he doesn't know this to this day. I, I've never really discussed that with him, uh -huh. but that really changed my life when he yep. turned around that day and said that somebody believed in me and says, I see you've got great potential at like this football club. And then he went into his five-year plan and mm -hmm. then said to me, you're going to be captain. And yep. that was a special moment. Mm -hmm. And obviously it kind of leads in that journey to, yes. to that yeah, day. To that day and yeah. It was uh, so, but the cup was like that feeling. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, it was brilliant. So. Yeah. After the game, yes. I remember a lot of it's kind of hazy, you know. And I think as I, said, yeah. I was just coming up for 25. Maybe as a fan, I was kind of too young to realise just I don't mean how rare these occasions would be for uh, someone, yeah, but as it yeah. turned out, you know, no, because although you say maybe it was a great season in terms of league, the club had been relatively successful with well, the European not. nights, you know, where did well and in terms semi -finals of semi finals all uh, the time, yeah, uh, uh, both you know, competition, uh, uh, you're yeah. right, so you're right. I yeah. kind of thought, well, this is how it's this going is, to yeah. be, you know, no. and I wish I could go back in some of these 30s and say, just watch everything, just I soak know. it all up. But I, I remember, know. like, you know, driving home, yeah. and we went to a party in my brother's house. He was up, living up in Lonsdale and Paisley at the time. I got a babysitter for him, my son, up there. And it was just, it was like a street party. Yeah. And neighbours that he didn't even know just were all out in the street. That's what it meant. I mean, it was bizarre. We were at, at one point we were dancing a conga <laughs> with a, an, inf an inflatable <laughs> doll with a St. Munster <laughs> all up and down the street. and. Do you, know, uh, do you know, it's one of these things that kind of maybe all frustrates you as a St. Bun fan as well. Yeah. The fans who come out for the big occasions, you know, and these people were all fans for the right, because I think they realised what it meant yeah. to the town. Oh, incredible. What did the players do at night time? Yeah, well, that was interesting. Again, we were, of course, after all the, the thing, we went into the dress room, and I remember Alec Ferguson coming in, but I was sitting in my strip, and I was just desperate to take it out mm -hmm. to my family. So I ran, I, I left the dressing room <laughs> and because uh, I'd been through that injury and my, my sure. wife and family stood by me a lot through that and my dad and everything and I ran out, I think people were shocked when I came out the front entrance and my family were standing waiting and stole my strip and mm -hmm. my, I gave my son my medal and uh, we, we, I spent that there but then went back in the dressing room we were all, all I mean the celebrations were fantastic mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I remember Alex saying as well, look, and it, sorry, going back to the thing is, and I'd promised the players if we'd won the cup, I would take a, a drink at the cup, because I was near a drinker. Of course, that's right. And that's uh -huh. what I did. So the, the cup was, was my first drink with champagne. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> and I, get, I got to like it. <laughs> but um, I did, I took my first drink at it, and that night, uh, I'm ashamed to say probably, but I did drink mm -hmm. that night, and I, I was a horrible experience because <laughs> I've never, I was, I mean, that. But I remember Alex saying the dressing room as well. Look, take this in. Mm -hmm. No, these have achieved. Take this in. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was just. Do, do you think you and maybe like so you know? McGarvey and Abercrombie appreciated it more because you were older, Jim. Maybe for some younger players, it was kind of. Yeah, sometimes as you're a youngster, you uh -huh. do, aye, you're just starting on, you think, oh, this is... This but is for us, be, yeah. the journey it had been, yes, mm -hmm. uh, the McGarveys, myself and people like that. And I've got to give Neil Cooper a special mention, because oh, yeah. Neil Cooper was man of the match, he was mm -hmm. voted man of the match, he was absolutely outstanding Solid, that day. Oh, he was yeah. outstanding. 
Um, so, no, it was as you say, for the older sort of guys in the team, it's, say appreciate it more, that's maybe unfair, but you know what it meant, you uh-huh. know what it meant. And yep. uh, and then we, as we got on the bus and we travelled through, I remember the Archie McFair, they were all on the bus and they were interviewing everybody. But you just took in the sights and we come through the longer route through Barhead. Mm-hmm. And as you say, I couldn't believe how many people were out. Just as you're saying, as yeah. people would uh, just dance in the streets with St Murn. And there was a lot of people there, no with St Murn Scarfs, who probably, as you say, are part of the community. Yeah. And that's when it, because I'm older then, I'm looking thinking, my God, look what this means to people. Mm-hmm. And then oh, it was incredible when we hit the town centre. Yeah. That was just, that will never ever, I don't care if we won a, a cup again, that mm-hmm. just was incredible. I mean, that was unbelievable. Yeah, it was just, I mean, of course, a lot of the things as well, you're part of history because you're the last all-Scottish team yeah. to win. Yeah. And of course, both teams were all-Scottish and had Scottish managers. Incredible. Do you think that will ever happen again? No, just I don't. I think the way the world is now, and I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's, it's, it's a bad thing for yeah. that to be a good thing, but as you say, I think it's a proud thing as mm-hmm. well when you say uh, all the boys were uh, born in Scotland yep. and uh, and the managers as well. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's that's going to be a, a hard thing for anybody oh, yeah. to. It's a good pop quiz question, isn't aye, it? Aye, 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 aye. Yes, it is, it is. Um, but no, it was uh, and rightly saying as you say, even then it's great because I'm sitting here and you're talking mm-hmm. and things are flying into my mind again for that day, and. Ever in life, if I'm, hopefully I'm, I don't feel down often, but when I do feel down, I try and think of these memories uh, mm-hmm. yeah. to try and lift me. So. I mean, as you say, for a fan, obviously, it's just one of the pinnacles of memories. Yeah. I mean, I say to a lot of my friends, many of whom are like old firm fans, yeah. like, in my time, I've seen the team in three major finals and win two of them. That's not bad for a That's, small club like some it months, is, is it? isn't it? And, <laughs> and as I say, and you, you mentioned that, the team before with Ricky McFarlane and Alec Miller, um, the lead up to that season, we'd been in semi-finals all the yep. time and get beat by t- terrible things happening in the semis. We'd destroy you, going to extra times and yeah. extra games, and we never. And with McAvaney, McDougal, yep. saw all these guys. You no, know, when you look at the quality of the team we had. We're in Europe every oh, yeah. year. Uh-huh, yeah, I mean, um, so people, I mean, it's funny because you talk to either younger fans I or even people who aren't fans. They go, really? really? They say, yeah, we saw some greats play on that street. You know, it was there's nothing proud of that. And sometimes I show some groups around here, and here, and you look at some of the photographs out there, and you mm-hmm. think that was the European nights, and you see the crowds that was there, and no, the, and, it, and that's the the drive is. One day to get some money back to back that. There, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, because of the European, you know, the, the way oh, they were the great European nights. Uh-huh. And yeah. even travelling races, he's a player. It was brilliant. No, there was one time we were chartering, chartering planes where the fans and the players were travelling together yeah. uh, and spending a few days together mm-hmm. away in European countries. And it was just, as you say, you could nip yourself to see if you were dreaming in the days. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Um, well, I, I did bring something along, just a, a quick story. All right, okay. I'll just show you. Like a lot of people will say, I don't think I appreciated at the time just how big an event it'd been, perhaps, yeah. how kind of rare. Yeah. And I did have a, I did have a programme, but in between house moves, etc., it went oh, missing. I know, I know. But a good friend of mine, who a work colleague, um, who lived near the stadium, wasn't right. a fan of either club, right, but went okay. up on the day, got a programme, and he got it signed by Paul Sturrock and Frank McGarvey. Oh. So, before Good we finish today, players. I'll get you to sign that for me, Tony. Oh, I'd be really, delighted I'd love to that. do that. I, was just and then I just brought along, players. you can have a wee look through them, just a couple of, because my wife, my mother, was the councillor for the Central Paisley at the time. Ah, right, so okay. when they had the civic reception, I was her plus one. Oh, fantastic. Um, and I just got a couple of photos you can wee look at there, just of players. Oh, who my there. God, yeah, well, there's there said, uh, Paul Chalmers, who mm-hmm. never took, and he's yeah. smiling away there, and Paul played a major part in the cup run, Kenny McDowell, Ian Cameron, you can mm-hmm. sort of see there. Now, they were, all were wise were there that day yeah. as well afterwards, which was great with the club. So that's great. And there's uh, Brian Gallagher, Les Fridge, Neil Cooper. Because uh, Les was the reserve keeper. Yes, he was. Yeah. And they've got Gardner Spears yeah. sitting there as well. Fantastic 40s. <laughs> Billy Abercrombie. Fantastic photo, Billy there. Mm. Um, and people don't realise what a top, top player he was. 
No, mm -hmm. eh, we in the days you would like to think with top midfield players, oh, no yeah. Starks, Richardsons, all these Peter Weirs and stuff yep. like that. But Billy Abercrombie was a top player, and as I say, I keep going back to that. If MD ever deserved to be a captain, he's something as this guy. So. Top man. That's a really nice uh, thing to say. <laughs> and Tommy Wilson again came for Queen's Park, remember at the time. Mm -hmm. And I look now and I look at players and they talk about the boy Tierney at Celtic and we're all in Jason Naismith and that. Yep. Tommy Wilson was an incredible fullback. Yep. You talk about getting up and doing the part and mm -hmm. delivering crosses and back in defending. Top, top player, Tommy. Uh, and there's <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm sure my, myself and Frank McGarvey, who still to this day keep great contact with each sure. other. We've always, for kids, we've always followed each other's careers, uh -huh. uh, stuff like When I sadly moved to Bristol for a couple of years, Frank went to Liverpool and we used to commute up and down at uh, the weekend of with our families so. uh -huh. and stuff. And, yeah. uh, and again, McGarvey. What can you say about him? Garvey is a, whatever he's been, I mean, he's a, a phen phenomenal player. I remember Bob Paisley once saying it was one of his regrets that he let McGarvey go back up to Celtic. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was, uh, when you think, of, I, I used to go and see Frank uh, and they would play the reserve games with Liverpool mm -hmm. and him and Ian Rush were the wow. two reserve team players. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> these, if you looked at their team in the yeah. days, incredible. Yeah. Uh, and Fairclaw, oh, there was yeah. all these guys he had to be against. But it, Frank was a, a big Celtic man, so Obviously he got his dream back and yeah. back there. Um, so, and I think even oh, probably for, for Frank, you know, and I think he said it himself, when he came back to St Mum from Celtic, he didn't think he'd be winning a trophy again. No, you know. no, he so didn't. what a great way, you know, to kind of complete that circle, wasn't yes, it? Yeah, yeah, and uh, do you know, I was just looking at his photos and it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I'll get you copies of those. Thank you, that'd be great, <laughs> But yeah. a real question for you. Yeah. You ever thought of growing the moustache again? Because that was, was a trademark. <laughs> that was, was a trademark. That was a trademark. <laughs> yes, it was. It, it really was. Um, I'd done it a couple of years ago for the Movember. Oh, uh, right. for uh -huh. the, the fans had yeah. asked us to sort of grow it back in, so I'd done that was, uh, more than a couple of years ago, and I'd done that, but at one time in my life, because I had a, a moustache when I was, Billy will tell you, at primary school and secondary school, I had <laughs> the clones of moustache, <laughs> and I never ever thought I'd ever take it off, yeah. and uh, I did, I ended up taking it off when I was 40, <coughs> uh, and I would... I wouldn't have grow one back in again. No. No. It was a lot of work as well. So when you think about it, you know, you know, said there yeah. yourself, you know yourself <laughs> yeah. to groom it and to keep it. But um, and so many people say that, and I'm saying to myself, well, I'd rather be known for my football than my <laughs> moustache. But it seems to be everybody <laughs> is with my moustache. Right. But no, Listen, Tony, thanks. Oh, it's been no. a pleasure to talk to no, you. Can just I get some of the memories. It's absolutely been, been a real pleasure for me, yeah. and it's. Uh, as I say, I can feel you've, it's lifted my whole day today. I just feel great speaking about the cup final. I never I'm, get tired of it. No, I never I'm get tired of it. Hopefully, you know, in the not too distant future, we'll be back. Well, definitely, no. I feel we the new management team here, Jack and James Fowler, and I've got to mention Alan McManus, but I, I really believe um, we're in a cup final already. Sure. Uh, but I really believe it's going to happen in this yeah. club.